Hi, here we are to record our first video on wisdom, and I did actually get into it. I didn't get into it that far. I said I read to pay, uh, chapters 5 and 6, and I, while I did that, I had forgot a lot of it, and I didn't take the, the deep notes that I should have, but today, earlier today, I was rereading chapter 1, so if nothing else, we'll at least speak on chapter 1, and there always seems to be a lot to say lately. Uh, out of my mouth, anyway, forgive me for that, uh, but, um, you know, you see what you see, and certainly when you see it, the Spirit, uh, maybe not in all cases, but in some cases, wants you to speak up about it, uh, so let's begin our reading, Wisdom, Chapter 1, this is in the Apocrypha, um, I purchased this copy quite a while ago, uh, man, it's probably been seven, eight years at least that I've had this copy, maybe longer than that, because time really does progress quite quickly lately. So anyway, we'll begin chapter one, verse one. Love righteousness, ye that be judges of the earth. Who's the judges of the earth? Well, you know what? Where did we find those judges? We found those judges in Micah, chapter five, verse one. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He hath laid a siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. And they did. And what did that striking upon the cheek lead us to understand? Well, if we go to Ezekiel 19, it leads us to understand they silenced her, her, her voice, not his voice. We hear his voice all the time. It's her voice that got silenced on the hills of Israel. And we go to Ezekiel 19 verse 8, 9, and we'll also take a quick look at 10. Then the nation set against her on every side from the provinces, and they spread their net over her, and she was taken in their pit. What pit? The pit of Sheol. When in, we went into death when we followed behind man in his religious lies. That's right. Verse 9, and they put her in a ward in chains. Where did we discover that was? Well, in, in allegorical terms, what what did what was said in, uh, uh, I should have pulled this one up, in Job 38, eight, sorry, I can't speak, uh, Job, that's Isaiah, okay, we'll get to Job, so Job, I can't see nothing, my lighting is so bad, I do got a new lamp. My lovely sister gave me a Mother's Day gift, mind you. Uh, and she's so sweet, my sister is. And she gave me this magnifying lamp. Uh, <clears throat> and I should have it set up in here. And I think I'm going to. <clears throat> because it would be so valuable in, in this pursuit of truth. Job 38. So, I'm in Job. You'll be happy to know I've made it to Job. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so 38. What did it say about uh, the bands of Orion? I think it was there. Yeah. I just need to locate it first. Okay, so obviously it must be over here. I do have a light here, sort of. Um, okay, it's here somewhere. It's bad when you've got a bad memory. Okay, right there. It is verse 31. So it is Job 38, 31. So this is linking us back to... Um, and they put her in ward. I'm going to look that up because I didn't actually look that up. In chains and brought her to the king of Babylon. They brought her into holds that her voice should no more be heard upon the mountains of Israel. And that was she, the daughters of Israel, who was the branch. And what does it say? It says in Job 30, uh, Job, not 30, 38, verse 31, Kens thou bind the sweet influences of the Pleiades, or loose the bands of Orion. Canst thou bring forth Mazaroth in 
not his season, her season, they changed the picture, or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? Well, actually, Arcturus was with her daughters. <laughs> so it's all allegorical to the daughters of Israel, who we found them binding her, and it's the bands of Orion. I got the video up about two or three videos back, where we realized that the religion out of Egypt um, was what bound her. And so, in a sense, you see those uh, three pyramids, and we discussed how that was, um, was what was linking to the belt of Orion, also known as the Three Marys, those three stars there, um, that was binding her, right? Binding a religious lie that bound her in the earth. So, and she became silenced and she became come bound. So that's one way of looking at it, all right, is all I'm saying. I'm not saying that that's necessarily the way to look at it, but it's certainly one way to look at it. And we discussed how the gender of Orion changed over time. It actually began as a female, and she had these long, long uh, hair of stars that over time separated, and that meant her glory separating from her. She was a great, she was known as the great warrior in the sky in uh, the ancient uh, to the Arabians in the ancient days, um, and anyway, we, we discussed it in all that video. So, it, it, again, we see a link, simply a connection here, to when they bound her and silenced her after they struck the judge, which links us back to wisdom, is what I was driving at. Now, okay, get everything back to right there. So, they put her in wards, they brought her into holds, that her voice should no more be heard upon the mountains of Israel. That's the judge they silenced. Now, we'll read verse 10 because I also did a video on uh, that included this verse, uh, I believe the very last video. Um, verse 10, Ezekiel 19, Thy mother is like a vine in thy blood, planted by the waters. She was fruitful and full of branches by reason of many waters. What do you think of? When you think of a vine, well, if we put a whole bunch of X's, X, 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 and we join them, right? And we join them. That's a lot like a vine, isn't it? But it's also the X chromosome is what you're looking at. So, you, thy mother is like a vine in thy blood. Your mother was like a vine in a vineyard. Your mother was like a vine in your vineyard planted by water. So we get the scepter here. Uh, planted by the water, she was fruitful and full of branches, daughters, by reason of many waters. That's the truth of God. That's what that represents. But what does that actually make me think of personally? It actually makes me think of the wrongness of this verse in Malachi chapter 2, verse 10. What does it say? Have we not all one? You know what it says? Father! <laughs> Well, guess what? You know what I'm seeing? We've done this as well. Let me flip the page here. Have we all one? Okay, let's do this. Uh, I don't care about my messy writing. Sorry if you do. Um, have we all one? What do you think? What do you think we all have? I uh, don't know if you can see that, if I'm holding it right. What do we all have one of? Have we not all one? Let me do this. I would say, have we not all one mother? That's what I would say. Don't buy the science of it all, which they love to do. Um, so there you go. We've discussed that without really going into wisdom, but yet we're, we're link, linking it all back to wisdom, who wisdom is. Um, so, ye that be judges of the earth, think of the Lord with a good heart, and in simplicity of heart, seek, they got him, no, her, because, well, we've understood why it's her. We'll get into a little more detail as we move on, but we do need to move on, because that's verse 1. <laughs> okay, verse 2. For she will be found of them that tempt her not. Now, what does that mean, do you suppose? Well, you know what I, I think it means? I think when these, you know, when I first contemplated of God as my mother down on my knees here, 
12 years ago, 13 years ago. You know, it wasn't an easy contemplation for me to kind of depart from all this idea that it's father and his children, father and his children, despite the fact of what my physical eyes bears witness to. And, but when I started over time to study more and more and recognize the rightness of it, and would start to suggest it to some people, they would just say, don't you even talk to me about mother. Don't even mention mother as God. What foolishness. We know it's father and his children, and father gave life to everything. And yet it sounds so utterly ridiculous to me now to think not of my mother. But that's what it means. For she will be found of them that tempt her not. You see what it's saying? You're going to find her when you start, you know, removing all this foolishness that has been pounded in your head by those that are in power to make you believe this lie. And we'll discuss that again, hopefully a little bit here as we go on. So, she will be found of them that tempt her not, and she will show herself unto such as do not distrust her. I don't trust those women. I don't trust no female god. It's father and son. You can't trust a woman. Um, so, let's move on because I want to get into what I was going to say. Because I've been watching a, a, a new channel, and I, I am quite fascinated uh, by historical accounts. And this uh, guy, see, this Jewish man, seems to give a pretty good account without too much... Um, you know, of him throwing in too many unneeded and unnecessary comments, like we've heard so many do over the years. Um, I'm trying to get women to stand up for themselves. We already know men will stand up for themselves. It's women that we have the problem with standing up for themselves and for their cause. God says, stand up for your cause. God, right? God, stand up for your cause. That's what it says in Psalms. And we know now why it says that. It's talking about the presence of God on earth that was defined as the women inside the nation of Israel that the men over time began to reject a covenant with her. Okay. So, anyway, I've been watching this guy and he, I've been learning a lot. So, um, we'll get into that a little bit. For, for forward thoughts separate from God and her power, when it is tried, reproveth the unwise. So, uh, let's, you know what, I never pulled up the definition of reproveth. Let's see what it says here. Because, ah, uh, been doing that. Define reproveth. Let's see. To scold or correct, usually gently or with kindly intent. To express disapproval of, censor. It is not for me to reprove popular taste. Okay, so to scold or correct, usually gently or with kindly intent. Um, so what does it say again? Uh, for forward thoughts separate from God and her power, when it is tried, reproveth the unwise. So uh, what the Spirit does, what God does, is prove the unwise just how unwise they are. And uh, that, of course, takes us back in our thinking to Proverbs 1, where she says, Fools love their foolishness. And they would not heed my instructions. They would not listen to me. They would not listen to my laws. And I think that again go, takes us back to, um, for she will be found of them that tempt her not. You don't tempt wisdom. Let's, let's pull in Proverbs because it's such an intricate part in the Christian, so-called Christian Bible. So let's pull in Proverbs chapter 1, which I hadn't thought to do. <laughs> it might be a good idea since that's the book of wisdom. Uh, in um, in the Bible. So, let's see. I can't really see that well. Again, I'm sorry. I've got to get a better setup. I just don't work in here, right? Or I would have it better set up. I, I, I work in here when I'm recording, but that's about it. Um, sometimes I work here, but probably because of the bad lighting, I don't as much as I would. Uh, so the Proverbs of, it's got Solomon. No, I don't think it's of Solomon. I think this wisdom was wisdom, the daughter of Israel. She is known as the Holy One. Um, the daughter of Israel. Of Israel! To know wisdom and instruction. To perceive, perceive the words of understanding. Yeah, and we're going to hit that 
in, in all of this here. Um, to receive the instructions of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young woman, knowledge, and discretion, or to the young man. A wise woman will hear. Yeah, she'll hear this truth. Um, not the unwise. They're going to be reproved. Um, when it is tried, reproveth the unwise. And her power, when it is tried, tried reproveth the unwise. Um, and that takes us back to the, the idea of a mother scolding her children. She's very gentle about it, usually. She's not usually uh, angry about it when she does it. Although, um, you know, when you, un when you begin to study more and more, we understand she is the one that does hold her wrath back. She is the one that, when she does speak, um, she is able to control herself and her mannerism and quietly um, acquire the information that she needs. And then when it is time to speak, she speaks. And when they will not hearken, then her wrath becomes unleashed is what we kind of understand in our study. Um, so a wise woman will hear and will increase learning. And a woman of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels to understand a proverb and the interpretation and the words of the wise and their dark saying. So we know what dark saying here means. It means a riddle, right? And uh, once you have wisdom in your heart, you let her back into your heart where you have rejected any notion of women being wise, but nothing but wicked. And and that's the truth. I, I've understood just that how they really worked on hammering down women and hammering. So I used the word hammer, so let's go into it. So I was watching this new channel. I'm, I'm, it's probably come up in a lot of you. I won't do that in case it reflects on uh, the video here. But S.O. What was it called? S.O. Erica, I think is is what it's called. And it's it's a Jewish man. And uh, what uh, I pulled up, the first video that I pulled up was Hammer of the Witches. And it was just fascinating to see how really... The men had so much power that they were able to, you know, in the end, crucify, burn these women out with just simple accusations. And you could see that a lot of them were just so caught up with porn in their own imaginations. It didn't seem like they could draw enough, you know, nudie pics, which would have been their version of porn at that time. And so many ridiculous thoughts and accounts of how weak women were sexually and and, and and I had to outright laugh when the suggestion was made and he kind of the guy who does it does it with kind of tongue in cheek sometimes and I I really approve greatly of that because there is humor to be found in a lot of this stuff. You know, when you've got your reasonable mind on and you're able to think straight and not with the foolishness that got hammered into us through violence with the intent of causing you to bow to the idol and to Christianity. And this is all happening in pivotal moments of history where really it was a requirement for everybody to be found bowed at the feet of this idol. And if they did not, then you were going to find an accusation. And at least that's in, weaved in through there. You can see that. Um, but, you know, the tongue, I had to laugh when he said, you know, these women would steal men's um, semen. Yeah, because, you know, women have to steal men's semen, don't they? I mean, it's the hardest thing in the world to do. It was just utterly... I mean, I don't care if you hid behind doors. You did not have to steal a man's semen. It was, it's ludicrous. Absolutely ludicrous. And that these women were bowing down and worshipping the devil. Well, we know that the devil was there probably if there was a such thing as this really happening around fires and copulating with the devil. Well, that was Adam, <laughs> you know. That was fought. The men were there too, and they were probably the very ones accusing him of doing it. Um, it's just, it goes so deep into the mentality of how these men in positions of power were able to debase women in such a manner that people could, would actually over time begin to just accept it as a simple truth. That women were less, that they're wickeder, they're more uh, probable to demonic possession and all of this stuff because they said so. And when their accusations come out, it stuck, baby. Like they said, like he said in that video, he said, you know, any poor soul 
uh, that ended up trapped in this system knew that death was a certainty. They were not going to walk free. They weren't. Um, and um, that really added up. And it ended up to, to the murdering of, burning of, what was it, 60,000 women. Uh, I think they say something like 80% of them were women, 20% were men, to be fair. Because there were some men who would stand the ground and say, look, I, I know this woman. Um, she's a good woman. She, she healed, you know, uh, you know, my, my wife, my brother, my father, my mother, my sister, my children. Uh, cause a lot of the times these were the healers inside these villages, according to, um, what this man was saying. And, and so a lot of them were ending up with nobody to, to heal in these vi villages. So 20% of them were men and I suspect strongly they were the 20% that we're willing to actually stand with righteousness and not all this foolishness and wickedness and and um, this out of control mentality that you know men were really built up on power they really were and they were going to debase women and um, and and even yet today it lingers in the mind of many that women are just women will not hold together in a lot of cases because while men it's clear hated women they taught women to hate women. Women will not stand up for other women. They'll stand up for another man, and men will stand up for a man. But women standing up for themselves and for their cause in the earth of truth, um, it's, it's going to be a hard pull. Uh, they're starting to come around, I can see, uh, to some degree, uh, but we got a long pull ahead of us yet. Um, so... The dark sayings was the riddles, we understood. Um, and you're only going to be able to break those riddles down when you begin to hearken to wisdom. Um, again, so, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And boy, did they despise these women of wisdom. They hated them. She says, they hated me without a cause, but it didn't stop them from gnashing upon me and tearing me down and that's just what we find them doing in the Old Testament so my daughter hear the instruction and thy and thy, uh, no my son hear the instruction and thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother see it was mother's law but they did um, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck um, so my daughter my son if sinners entice thee consent thou not if they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. So there we see it. Uh, and we see the shedding of a great many of these women uh, down through the ages who, without power to defend themselves, um, uh, without nobody to stand up, not, not willing. There was a real unwillingness to stand for, for the truth and in defense of anybody else. And we're all guilty of it because we don't want to get pulled into something that's going to lead to our own personal downfall. It's a horrible thought, isn't it? And certainly back then, um, in, in these specific time frames where so much of this accusation was going on, where we see them saying, come, let us lay wait for blood, let us look privily for the innocent without cause. Don't be partakers with them. Don't go down that crooked path with them. And there's many instances throughout history, well, yes, I'm just talking about witches, but Certainly throughout history we get uh, many incidents, you know, of that taking place. So let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. So they knew they were going to grow rich from these accusations, and indeed they have. Because when you take out 50% of the population and you remove their rights under the law, you remove their rights to goods, you remove their rights to equality, guess what you do? You heap goods upon yourself. That's what you do. You actually end up being a thief under the law. That's what you become. And they are, God accuses Satan, which leads back to Adam, as being a thief under the law. And so, cast in thy lot among us, let us all have one purse. Uh, my daughter, my, my son, walk not thou. In this way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, their crooked path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. 
Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. That's the dove that gets ensnared in the fowler's snare. Uh, but she escapes the fowler's snare. Uh, it says she escapes, but he does not. And we've understood why, because this lie of God as man and how it empowers him under his own law um, is like, it's like honey on his tongue. And it's like, no, it's just common sense. God is male. It's just, it's father and son. Oh, come on. There's no such thing as mother. You know, uh, hello, male and female. Mother gives life, not father. Her body shapes the clay in her womb, not father. Right? But no, nope, that don't make sense. That just, it don't make an answer sense because through these violent, you know, points in time, they use these times to hammer this lie in. That's what they did. Um, and they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. We see that being the case in some cases where the men knew that if they got rid of the widows, that they could take their land. That's right. And it was going to help make them rich. It was going to empower them, and it certainly did. Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of the concourse, and in the openings of the gate in the city, she uttereth her voice. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? There's where it translates in some parts as, Fools love their foolishness. Father is God. He, he, he. Right? Um, how long, you fools, will you love simplicity, your foolishness, man's God? No mother. And yet wisdom says, when I cried, you didn't answer. Right? And uh, we hit that in the last video. Where were you when I arrived? Where were you when sense and reasoning was testifying in your ears? Where were you? Oh, right, you were bowed down at the feet of an idol. You couldn't be bothered to respond to sense and reasoning and wisdom. Um, so, simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you and I will make known my words unto you. This is wisdom she's speaking. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regard it. You see? You see the web of lies, the weave of that web over time? Um, and how they have come to make women, even in many cases, hate themselves. Uh, we know men do. You know, uh, they'll say, well, you women don't love us if you could say the things you're saying. But you can take our rights away from us. You can accuse us. You can say we're weaker and dumber. You're allowed to do that, you know, under your own laws. But, oh, you know, you don't hate us, right? Um, so they always turn it around, right? They're good at turning it around. Mother says, you turned everything upside down and you told the potter she had no power over the clay. And that's mother who forms the clay in her womb that you told she had no power. Um, and so, no, mother, God, don't go on with your foolishness. I've actually heard them say this. Don't talk your foolishness about their being mother. Okay, well, we'll just remove her right off of planet Earth. God says, you are without excuse. Not to understand my Godhead. I manifested it in what I created for you. For your eyes. To bear witness to. And then you say there's no mother. It's father and his children. Right? And that come through many incidences through history. Using great violence to nail that lie in place. That's where, where you find it. Um, because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hands and no man regard it. But ye have said it not all of my counsel and would none of my reproof we're going to stop there okay i will also laugh at your calamity and i will mock when your what does it say when your what does it say fear when your fear comes i got it circled so it's over the f i couldn't see it looked like tear i, was, oh, I know it's not tear sorry Sorry. Um, so let's go back here. Um, so we read verse 2, but let's read it again. For she will be found of them that tempt her not, 
and show her herself unto such as do not distrust her. You get where we're driving? You get, get everything we just said? And how they made it so you wouldn't trust a woman? <laughs> For froward thoughts separate from God and her power, and when it is tried, it reproveth the unwise. You sound like fools when you say there's no such thing as a mother who gave life. You sound like the unwise, and you sound like a fool that loves foolishness. That's what you sound like to God. For into a malicious soul, wisdom shall not enter. And it is maliciousness um, that is uh, driving the driving force behind um, this absolute um, revolt, hate, siege, um, against the holy ones on earth because it was mother's law that you were to exalt and uphold for into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter nor dwell in the body that is subject unto sin so how did the body become subject unto sin it became subject unto sin under the law when man took control of the law that's right from mother that's right and it says um, sin, iniquity is shaped by the law. That's right. And uh, it says the principles of this world that we became founded upon will burn with a fervent heat. And that comes down to your false stone that was put in place, which was akin to a harlot spirit bound to a male idol as if he is Lord and God. Uh, for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding. And will not abide when unrighteousness comes in. For wisdom is a loving spirit. Well, they'll tell you that's father. Mother's got nothing to do with being a loving spirit. It is the mother that is the loving spirit. She is the one that will forgive her children. Male and female, both. Typically, a mother don't, you know, take one child and favor one. Yes, there's incidences, but... Typically, a mother is loving, nurturing, caring. She don't hold one child up over the other because you know why? She carried that child in her womb for nine months. Then she travails in great pain and humiliation. You can say it's not humiliating. It is humiliating. It was humiliating to me. I don't care what other women, other women can cast it off like, oh, it was, you know, so happy and non-humiliating. It's very humiliating. It's very painful. So when you do birth that child and you see this precious newborn child being placed in your arm, there's not another feeling like it in the world. There really isn't. Because you know what you had to go through to bring that child into this world. So I don't think a father can be nearly as loving as a mother just on account of what she had to go through to bring that child into this world. So you can say, Father, 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 and you can dismiss the travail of the mother, 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 all you want. You sound like a fool when you do it. You sound like a person with absolutely no understanding. You sound like the unwise. You sound like you want to... Um, be found of them that tempt her not, and showeth herself unto such as do not distrust her. You sound like ones who distrust her. You sound like ones who wants to debase her. Um, and all of that is what we're being told here. For her wisdom is a loving spirit. But she will not acquit a blasphemer of her words. That's right. So the Holy Spirit, we're told in the New Testament, they want to tell you it's Moses and Elijah. Again, men with men are in love with themselves and their image. But it's the Spirit that will testify, right, um, with the word, word, right, blood and water, right? Which, as we know, the blood and water is the Red Sea. She says, my footprints you did not see. After she parted the waters into the two covenants that they are and birthed her children through, it's a birthing canal. That's right. And, uh, but she said, you didn't see me. You didn't see me. So what does she say? Uh, for wisdom is a loving spirit and will not acquit a blasphemer of her words. You don't blaspheme the Holy One and get away with it. Which is what Joshua tells you in the New Testament. He says, you can blaspheme me, the Son of Man, but you are not going to blaspheme the Holy One. And we found the Holy One sitting between the cherubs in 
2 Kings chapter 19. And it says, Oh, the daughter Zion has shaken her head at thee. You blaspheme the Holy One. Do you not know who you blaspheme? They don't. And it, it kind of, you know, the more you understand, the more wisdom leads you. you. You realize how little we know of our own world. How little historical accounting they have allowed us to know of ourselves and of all things. And it just sounds utterly ridiculous when you sit here. That you can look at this world and know so little about the place where you are from. And that's what Ezra, 2nd Ezra and Uriel, the Archangel Uriel, who I believe is she, not he, um, is saying to, to Ezra there. She says, you asked me of things to do with heavenly matters, but how could you possibly, possibly understand anything I would have to tell you about the heavenly matters when you know so little about your own world? I can ask you three questions. If you can answer them, then I'll tell you what it is you want to know. But the truth was, Ezra couldn't answer those questions. They were riddles. And they've made sure to keep you in the dark and to rob us of the things that we ought to know about. Especially us daughters, if we're listening to wisdom. Which is why we're going to be found holding no guile. So you don't blaspheme her word. Which is what the sons did in the Old Testament and eventually the daughters followed suit. Right? Don't tempt her. I'll mock you in the day of your calamity. You can't reason simple truth out. And like I said, it just, it begins to make so much sense when I look around this world and think how much we know, how little we've been told, how little we have been told. And it just made me think of Ezra, you know, when Uriel says, how do you expect me to explain heavenly matters? When you don't even know your own matters that you ought to know. Such as, you have a mother and a father. And it is your mother that travails to shape life in her womb and to bring it forth. And then you give all glory to father. That's what you do. If I ask you of these things, you don't seem to even know them. You don't even seem to know what would be asked of you. Um, so it begins to reason more and more the more you listen to wisdom the more you attempt to reason things out with your mind with your spirit with god there and i truly believe there is god um because somebody has been speaking to me <laughs> and uh, yeah there may be science so far above me that it's going to feel godlike but at least in my opinion it is godlike i i know i i there's no way i could come to these answers and i know I've been answered in various ways that can only be described as what we consider spiritual, and spiritual in manner. Um, it's certainly, I'm not speaking to myself. There is a spirit out there that is so speaking to me. So for those who don't believe in something beyond us, it's because you've never had these experiences. That's what I believe. Um, and I certainly believe that I have been having these experiences I don't think there's any way I could possibly know the things that I know without being led by, I guess there's an outside source. And I would say, no, it is not demonic. Because this truth reasons, it is your lies that do not. I would say yours is demonic. I would say an idol is demonic. I would say telling women that man is her head is akin to being wicked and evil. And that you want to be careful about blaspheming her words of wisdom. Um, so a blasphemer of her words for God is witness of her reigns and a true beholder of her heart and a hearer of her tongue. So who's that? That's the presence of God that we're talking about. Uh, she chooses us out, right? We don't choose ourselves out. I guess indirectly we do. Um, because like I said in one of my videos that I had made the terrible mistake of thinking truth actually mattered, you know. And uh, for me, when I hit on it, it was the only thing that reasoned out. It was the only thing that made sense. And so that's why wisdom makes so much sense to me when she says fools love their foolishness, you know. Uh, anyway, so a true beholder of her heart and a hearer of her tongue. They got he, of course. We're shifting this out. And I do this intentionally. 
you know, because that's all I've ever heard. God, he, 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 he. Um, and I do it, she, because it, it's what makes sense for the creator because of, she's, it's the only one that we really have turned our back on. We didn't turn our back on father. My whole life I was taught father, 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 son, son, son. The Holy Spirit was another male. Um, more or less. Yeah, all the angels were male. Though they're all sexless. <laughs> Um, I, I, I know I shouldn't have, but, um, and I watched it just to see what it would say. And I had to laugh at the movie because it, they were telling you a simple truth. And it made so much sense, but it was hilarious. And that was the movie, what was it called? Dogma? Like, this was three years ago. I probably watched this movie. Uh, but he, the angel, he's supposed to be an angel. And he's so draw. And he, he stands up at the table and, and he has... Kind of some sort of cup over that part of his body. So he says, well, no, of course I can't. I think it's something like cop. He said, of course I can't copulate. Of course I can't reproduce. We angels are sexless. And he stands up and he has this kind of <laughs> funny look. But it made sense. It made so much sense. If the angel are sexless, why is that obviously a male angel there? I mean, why? You know, if they're truly sexless, which would mean male and female? That's what that would mean. And God says the same thing. You saw no image, make no image of me. That means a male and a female. You don't make male and female of me. You don't. Nor animals, because we do have animal gods. Which is where uh, we actually get the bull god uh, sacrifice, uh, you know, of Jesus. Coming out of Egypt, we discovered. Uh, but God says, you make no image of me. God says, I am who I am. That doesn't mean I'm a man. It doesn't mean I'm male. That's not what that means. It means I'll be who I choose to be. I'll send who I choose to send. You don't tell me, Father's God and Son's God. And the fe then there's another male called the Holy Spirit who is male, the Holy One, which they revert back to. Jesus, of course, they say. Um, and, and so, none of it, none of it, reasons. They caught themselves because, you see, it was man writing so much of this stuff. And so, very little of it reasons out. And, of course, they can get away with saying it reasons as long as they rob us of everything in the earth. To the point where the angel Uriel will say to Ezra, how could you possibly understand my ways? You don't even understand your own earth. You don't even get what happened in your own earth, in your own historical accounts. You don't understand anything. How could you understand God? Um, so, for the Spirit of the Lord filleth the world. That's the presence of God, the daughters of Israel. And by extension, their sons. That's what that would be. And that which containeth all things has knowledge of that voice. Um, so, what does it say? Read that again. That's pretty important, isn't it? Knowledge is linked to hearing the voice or having the voice. For the Spirit of the Lord filleth the world, and that which containeth all things hath knowledge of the voice. Well, wisdom contains all things, doesn't she? Um, therefore, he, that would be Satan, the accuser, Adam, that speaketh unrighteous things cannot be hid, neither shall vengeance when it punishes, pass by him. Right? So, now we'll go here. This is about as far as I got. It's not moving very fast, is it? For inquisition shall be made into the counsels of the ungodly, and the sound of his word shall come unto the Lord for the manifestation of his wicked deeds. That's what's going on right now. We see his wicked words manifesting. We see the manifestation of what his wicked law has led to, don't we? We see it in the earth, don't we? This law of fairness, truth, and equity. We never had to fight for anything. We certainly ain't got to fight for anything now like equality. Oh, we certainly don't even got to fight for the she pronoun anymore. No, no, he don't. They don't hate us. No, they, they never hated us in the Old Testament when they made sure they removed everything female out of there. Pretty much. And certainly anything that would lead to a great understanding of who you are in God. They certainly wouldn't do that. 
They're certainly not going to leave that in. Um, so what does inquisition mean? Definition of inquisition is a period of prolonged and intensive questioning or investigation. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Are we akin to judges in a sense when we do that? It may not actually play out as we thought it was going to, but it's going to play out that way. Um, if not in this physical realm, certainly in the spiritual realm, where the spirit rules all things. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with uh, the War Scrolls. We've looked at that. Um, I'm not really on my game tonight like I need to be. But for inquisition shall be made into the counsel of the ungodly. What you did. What you caused to happen in the earth. Uh, you did not hearken to wisdom. When she arrived, you couldn't be bothered to listen and reason the simple truth out. You did turn away from the Holy One. You did turn away from God. It says the rock that birthed you and writhed in pain to bring you forth, you are unmindful of. You don't even know that, God. Why? Well, you're too busy going, he, he, he. And we know how it became he, 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 or he anyway. The he, he followed after the one he. Uh, because they had gained ground to do all that they wanted to do. Um, whatever their imaginations told them to do, they did it. And I think they thought to themselves, well, if we put three males in, there's no way they're going to suspect that it's male and female. And the Godhead, we're told, is male and female. But God says you were to make no image of that. You weren't to make male or female of that. So what we discovered in the Old Testament is that they did do that. They did make male and female idols. And then we see over time that the kings tore down all of the images that were connected to the female idol and then suggested, hey, you can worship in Judah at the male idol at the feet. And uh, that's exactly what we saw going on. Um, so I think, you know, forgive me for saying, I think I'm part of this inquisition. Um, I'm not certainly the only one here in this inquisition, in this investigation into the Old Testament that they say is the truth of God, word of God, when we clearly have a little book mentioned um, that comes out of this bigger book, and that is the little book that the seven thunders, the seven daughters, the sevenfold spirit will utter in the end of days, which is the truth. That's the, the mystery re revealed at the three and a half year mark that you denied the Holy One and her law, Mother's Law. That's what you did. Uh, for the year of jealousy, heareth all things, and the noise of murmurings is not hid. So um, you can look at jealousy in a negative term, uh, but we really get it in connection to God. God is a jealous God. She's jealous of her children for the sake of her children. Um, they turned from her. They were no longer listening to her. I know how I'd feel if my son was not listening to me. I'd feel very hurt uh, and perhaps even jealous uh, of those that might have more sway and power over my own children. Um, so I think this is actually a positive term here. And we get the positivity of it in a word in uh, uh, Song of Songs, chapter 8. Um, and it, it's the word there that they use is Yah. As a most venomous flame, and it is female, the venomous flame. Um, and I can't remember the full context of it. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Song of Songs. Okay, I'm past it. And we're coming to it now. Okay, Song of Songs. Where is it? It's right between here, but this is a hard place to get. Okay. Okay. Right there. Okay, now it's next. So, it was chapter 8. Let me see. My light's dying. Sorry. What does it say? Right there. It is chapter 8, verse 
uh, 6, I believe it say. Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm. For love is strong as death, and jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which has a most venomous flame. So the fire is feminine. I'm not sure the flame is here. I think it is too. Uh, and venomous is 3050, and I believe that's the number for Yah. Um, and uh, we're talking about her anger at the end. She's very controlled. Uh, but when she has made this investigation and they continue to turn away uh, from her words of truth to her witnessing in the land, which we know, again, I missed this, what does it say? For inquisition shall be made into the council of the ungodly. What, that inquisition has the understanding of a court case, right? Uh, and we link that to the controversy of Zion. That's, that's what we come to understand it was linking back to. So she's making an inquisition uh, into uh, the case that she has presented, that she does present, um, as the judge, no less. Um, really because that's always been her position. But in a sense, uh, when God does stand up and present her case, stand up for your cause and present uh, your side of the case, um, then everything is restored back to her. And she really then does become the judge um, where God says in Psalm 2, Ask of me the heathens and I'll give them all to you. You can do with them what you want. They're yours to do with what you want. This was yours. This always belonged to you. Once the Inquisition is finally made and she establishes the truth in the land, uh, she is took before the Ancient of Days, her mother, and she is returned back her authority. That's right. Which was denied her all along um, under the law. Uh, so for the ear of jealousy heareth all things, <clears throat> and the noise of murmurings is not hid. We know they murmured against us. We know they do it behind our back. We know they do it to our faces. We know men are far more likely to tear women's characters down. I watch it all the time. It's surprising how many men have no issues with tearing a woman down. Women don't have issues tearing women down. Uh, but I don't really see women doing it a lot back to men. I really don't see them, you know, coming back on them and fighting them and, and tearing them down uh, to the degree that a man will tear a woman right down into the ground. Uh, simply because I think he thinks he has uh, he, he, he has a sense of entitlement that time has gave to him, uh, you know, through these various historical incidences that has, you know, pounded this lie in, in our heads, uh, that man is God and God-like, and God says, not by might nor by power do I do all these things, but by my spirit do I accomplish it. So God is saying, I am who I am. I will be who I choose to be. It's not who you tell me I have to be. Um... So, and that comes out of reasoning. You, you've got to take, you know, the, the search for the upper road. You know, call for the old, the ancient ways. Call for them. Understand them. Um, and quit listening at the feet of an idol uh, to a man who really wants to do nothing more than uh, be in charge of it all and really in the end debase you in the process and take your rights away. Um, but he wouldn't do that. <laughs> you know, he wouldn't do that. He's too godly to do that to you. Uh, so seek not death. Uh, no, therefore beware of murmurings, which is unprofitable. And refrain your tongue from backbiting, for there is no word so secret, for there is no word so secret that shall go for naught, and the mouth that belieth slayeth the soul. So, you know, you can even speak and you can murmur behind my back. You can say all the nasty things behind my back that you want to say. Um, you want to be careful. Beware of the murmurings that you speak against me. Um, seek not death in the air of your life and pull not upon yourself destruction with the works of your hands. So what was the works of our hands? The idols. <laughs> you know, made by man. And uh, we find, actually, um, there's, like I said, there's more than one angle that you can take. Sometimes you can go the masculine, sometimes you can go with the feminine. Uh, sometimes it's clearly feminine, sometimes it's clearly masculine as well. 
but in Ezekiel 17, uh, you saw these male idols, and we know from Jeremiah that it was the men uh, that were shaping these idols from wood, uh, and then they would throw the remains of that wood into the fire, and they would go, aha, and after knowing they had just made this idol to bow down to, then they turned to the idol and bowed down to it and asked for it all kinds of things. When they had just made the idol, is what it was saying. But in Ezekiel 17, you see the women taking their goods, their own goods, their own physical possessions, and handing it over at the feet of these idols. Well, is that not akin to giving up your rights to a made-up man, God, that empowers him? Of course it is. Um, so, so seek not death in the air of your life. And pull not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your own hands. Which is what we're doing. Um, I found, you know, uh, I began to understand more about Shebna. Um, and I wrote it under one of my videos when the Spirit showed me what it meant, really. When Shebna was accused by God, God says, Why do you cut yourselves out, yourself out a sepulcher with the kings? Why do you do that? And she was saying, why would you cut yourself out a grave in the pit of Sheol when I gave you life? Why would you be found doing that? And I, I think there was great confusion with Shebna because we may be looking at several generations removed. Um, from the very beginning of that fall, where it just kept rolling along. You know, this idea man was God and you were to hearken to your king and... And the true living God um, would, of course, known it, but she would be waiting for her daughters to grow up enough to know it and to stand for God's case, for her case in the land. Um, so, for God had not, uh, for God made not death. Um, neither has she pleasure in the destruction of the living. Remember, she birthed us; she travailed to bring us forth. She does not delight in destroying her own children. She don't. Um, God made not death. That became, um, I think, as a result of a great amount of ritual, lying in the word. And now we see that they constantly play what I call ritual. I consider it rituals. Oftentimes it's just out in a play of words. Um, that they really do empower themselves simply by keeping it and playing, saying it and saying it and saying it over. Um, but they also create new rituals in a hope to bring about, um, you know, what they want to prevail in the land. Um, and, and that led to death. So God says, you brought on your own death. And I think God was saying that to Shebna. Uh, we looked at Shebna. And, and I think at that time God was saying, why would you want to cut yourself out a grave in Sheol with those kings, with those wicked kings that have stabbed you in the back? Why would you do that? Because she didn't know any better. I, I, I sometimes think that that's the reason. Um, she simply had been taught that th from other kings that that was the way it was supposed to be done. Um... When it clearly wasn't. And God's like, well, if you believe in me as a God of fairness, truth, and equity, and all these loving things, then why would you believe that I made you second best? Why would you believe that? Um, anyway, and why would you go along with shedding violence and turning on um, each other? Why would you go along with that? I never, never taught you that, ever. And to believe in a God that would teach that, is wrong. But you also have to understand that God knows that when you can't rehabilitate evil, you're not going to rehabilitate evil. You're going to have to do the hard thing and you're going to have to deal with it. That's right. Because in many instances, you're not going to rehabilitate the evil ones. You're not. So it simply means for the best of all the children, you're going to have to deal with that evil and wickedness. And ways that you may not want to have to deal with it, but you are going to have to deal with it. Um, and God is wise enough to know that, to understand that. Um, so, for she created all things that they might have their being, and the generations of the world were helpful, and there is no poison of destruction in them, nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. 
Um, so obviously we're talking about the beginning here, the very uh, beginning before the sin entered in. Um, for righteousness is immortal. But ungodly men with their works and words called it to them. There we go. The idea of a ritual. Uh, for when they thought to have it, their friend, they consumed um, to not. And I see, I knew at the time when I read this. Because I've got, they consumed. That's found in Isaiah 28. That's the covenant with death. But ungodly men with their works and words called it to them. For when they thought to have it, their friend. Who? Death. Wickedness. Evilness. When they thought to have it as their friend. So, yeah. Absolutely. So that does take us to Isaiah 28. Where it says they have made a covenant with death. And they think when the overflowing scourge comes in. That they may have an idea of a heavenly battle right here. Landing right into earth. And God does say when my sword um, descends. From the heavens. Well, that would be from the second heaven, wouldn't it? After conquering the second heaven. Descends into the earth. My sword will descend into the earth. Well, is that the overflowing scourge coming down? I know it sounds crazy. But it's certainly there. The idea is there. Out of the second heaven. It says when the overflowing scourge comes in. It will pass by us. Because we have made a covenant with death. And with falsehoods. Right? Uh, let me look it up. We've done this many times. We'll do it again. So I'm already in Isaiah, so let's go to 28. Isaiah 28 says this. Right there. It says... Okay, verse 15. Um, beware ye have said we have made a covenant with death and with hell. That's Sheol, right? With Sheol, because hell is Hades. Hades is um, the Greek concept of hell. It's interesting. It's in the Old Testament, but then it's translated, um, you know, into English. So the English uses the Greek, you know, hell, Hades, instead of Sheol, which is a totally different concept of hell, <laughs> Uh, than what the Greek concept is. So, well, you know, what are we dealing with here? Um, we're not dealing with fire. It doesn't say fire. Um, because the Greek concept of hell isn't to do with a burning fire. We saw the invention of that, actually, I believe, uh, over time from men, turning it into much more than what it was, that if you want bow to the king, the idol of the king, in Daniel 2 or 3, um, that we will heat the furnace seven times harder and we'll burn you in it. Um, and so there I think you get the birth and, and uh, the, the lookings into the first beginnings of this concept of hell to the Greeks. But Sheol was certainly a very different idea, a different understanding uh, when you get looking into it. Um, so we have made a covenant with death and with Sheol. Are we at agreement? When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge. And under falsehoods have we hid ourselves. What's that? Under false religion. Under religious lies and laws. And it says they, that we will escape, but they won't. And you want to know why they won't? Because they call it faith. <laughs> and they will not pick themselves up from the feet of the idol. That's why they won't escape. Um, so, which is why they are overtaken uh, by the scourge. So when the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Right? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation stone. This is the new foundation stone. The one that smashes the idol. In Daniel 2, on the feet, and that is cut out without hands, that's the spirit reborn upon the earth. That's right. Um, so I lay in Zion foundation stone, a tried, uh, and a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, feminine, a sure foundation, and he or she that believeth shall not make haste. You're not going to run away from this truth. You're going to recognize it when you hear it. You're not going to be frightened 
when they threaten you with their lies of, oh, you better believe in Jesus, the idol, or we're going to burn you in hell, um, which is the threat made in Daniel. Um, so there we go. Um, but ungodly men with their works and words called it to them, for when they thought to have it their friend, they consumed to naught and made... made a covenant with it because they are worthy to take part with it she says they hated me from the beginning and they hated me without a cause <clears throat> so we've understood all of that and it it makes sense it reasons oh it's wise it's wise it comes from wisdom so um chapter two uh, no, I'm not going to start chapter 2. I think this video is probably long enough. I blathered on long enough, I think. I, th I think. Uh, we'll wait. Maybe I'll actually do a better job on the next one. Um, this wasn't what I wanted it to be. Sorry. Um, but I think we accomplished a few things. Chapter 1. Um, maybe next time we might actually take a bigger part, a bigger chunk in it. I do. I do see I've got a whole bunch of notes. More so um, for the next. Yeah, I do have uh, quite a few. Um, well, I say quite a few. A few. I'll say I have a few. So I think I'll go in and I'll recap chapter two and I'll actually write out more notes so I can be more comprehensive in the study. Uh, show you a few more um, verses in the Bible that we can compare them to. Because they are there, I'll shut that off. And um, I'm, I apologize, it's not as sharp and crisp as I wanted it to be. Um, and um, so, with that said, I hope you are blessed with an abundance of wisdom. I hope you're listening to her. I hope you're hearkening uh, to her spirit. I hope you're hearing the wisdom in the words uh, that we're studying here. Um... I pray you're blessed with an abundance of truth and the water that will wash this, these, this blood stain, this violent system off of us, away from us. Um, and um, I thank you for watching. Hope you share. Um, take the time to study the word for yourself. And um, I hope you all have a really nice day. And thanks again.